The following lesson is linked to Learning Outcome 3, Writing and Presenting. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to reflect on, analyse and evaluate their own work, considering the opinion of others and present final draft. Learners should be able to refine word choice and sentence and paragraph structure and eliminate obvious errors and offensive language. Hello, my name's Andre. You'll remember that in our first three lessons in this series on editing, we've looked at how to improve your own writing, the things to avoid, how to construct sentences. But there's another aspect to editing. We've touched on it, but we'll focus there today. We are looking at how to edit other texts. And particularly, we're going to look at the kind of common errors which you're required to correct during tests and exams in English at school. So, by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to recognize the most common errors in texts, correct those common errors, and avoid making the common errors in your own writing. Being able to recognize and correct errors in language means that you could potentially be a valuable asset to any organization. You must be aware that every text printed is edited at some stage, Newspapers, magazines, even office memos are edited. If you are the person who can correct those, you're a valuable asset. In fact, there are people whose careers are made as editors for newspapers or magazines. At publishing houses, editors are employed to correct all manuscripts, be they novels or plays and non-fiction works. So, what we're going to try to do is to learn to become amateur editors ourselves. The areas in which I focus today are the ones which are commonly tested at your schools. We'll look at apostrophe use and concord and agreement. So let's move right on to looking at the apostrophe. What is an apostrophe? Can you identify one? Let's look at an example. I've made up an example we can look at. Here it is. Sam's books were stolen. So the apostrophe is this. Small comma. Look at it. It's written at a level just above the letters and usually between two letters or just after the final letter of a word over there. Okay, so that's what an apostrophe looks like. But what about its functions? Here are two examples. Norm says dog and there's a boy. I'm sure you can tell that these are two very different uses of the apostrophe. Here, the apostrophe with the S shows ownership. Nomsa owns the dog. The formal English term for this is possession. So, apostrophes can indicate possession. The second example indicates what is known as a mission. Apostrophes can indicate a mission. So here, in our example, there are two words, there and is, which become one because of the apostrophe. Take a look. I've got there and here is. I've taken the apostrophe and replaced the letter I to make theirs. These are the two basic uses of the apostrophe. So when you're editing, what are the errors you're going to be looking for? Here's an example I've chosen to show you. It and it. Consciously, I chose this example because it's one of the areas in which many, many people make a mistake. Consider these two examples. If a printer won't work, check its cartridge, and it's raining. Now here, this it, without the apostrophe, shows ownership. Whereas the other one, it, is an example of a mission the word is, it is. In your tests, this often appears. Now, in these examples, let's work out whether we're dealing with a mission or with possession. Here they are. Kant, Dorcas's, and the Mercedes doors. 
Have you tried to work these out on your own? Well, now let's look at them together. Our first example, can't, is really the word cannot. So, we're looking at omission. We've left out the N and the O. And then Dorcas's. That's an easy one. The apostrophe and the S for possession, ownership, remember? And then our final example here, Mercedes doors. If we're stuck here with an S and the plural form, more than one Mercedes, it's usual that we just put the single apostrophe in. Ownership by more than one. We call it plural possession. So let's recap what we learned about the apostrophe. We know that you have to edit all the mistakes in apostrophe usage in terms of possession, omission, and plural possession. Now we move on to another area in which common errors are made. Do you understand clearly the difference between singular and plural? Singular refers to one, while plural refers to more than one. And as I continue this lesson, I'm going to be using these terms often because we are going to be dealing with an area in which singular nouns match singular verbs and plural nouns match plural verbs. The rule which we use to describe this matching of noun and verb is called the Concord Rule. And here it's stated. The Concord Rule states that a singular subject must be matched by a singular form of verb and likewise, plural must be matched by plural. It sounds complicated, but it's actually not. First language English speakers find it easy to almost instinctively follow the rule. Not many of us are likely to say they is all at school today. We hear that the verb is wrong, and so we correct it to where they are all at school today. But sometimes it's more difficult to hear the correct form. So, for example, which of these two is correct? Not one of them were here today, or not one of them was here today. Let's talk about words like none, no one, neither, either. These are singular words, and their number is one. So, according to the rule of Concord, if you're using these words, you need to have verbs which are singular too. So here, not one is a singular word, which means that not one of them was here today is the correct form. And then when you're dealing with Concord, you need to think about the collective words as well. Words like South Africa or team. Now you'll often hear the cricket team are traveling to Australia tomorrow. Is this correct? Think about it. When we use South Africa, we use it to imply every individual in this country. But really, we're only referring to one collective idea. So that when you're using these collective words, these words like team, you need to include with it a singular verb so that it would read, the cricket team is going to Australia, or South Africa is going to win. We've looked at three types of Concord errors, and how to tell whether the verb should be singular or plural. Let's recap. When editing for Concord, here if it's clumsily stated, check the number, the singular or plural of the subject, and check for collective words. Now, just to check what you've learnt, let's try a short task. Name the errors in these sentences and choose the correct option to correct the sentence from the word in brackets. It's not that I'm unhappy. Then Russ's ideas are good and not a single one of the hundreds available 
are or is suitable. And finally, either the red one or the blue one are or is best. Now, I'm sure that's given you some food for thought. Think about that singular or plural verb carefully. And we're almost at the end of our lessons on editing texts. Be sure to join me for our final extension. Goodbye.